Hey everyone, Ryan Young, Kama Jiu Jitsu. Hope all is going well for you. By the time you see this, Christmas 2017 will have already passed. In fact, it's Christmas Eve today, and I'm out and about trying to get some stuff done. Had a few minutes, thought I would do an answer video. So the answer is, well, based on a question, from subscriber Biggie B. And he had asked uh, for me to do a video on now you're a purple belt, now what? In response to the one that I did a little while ago about being a blue belt. So, purple belts. <clears throat> purple belts, to me, you're the most important group within our universe of practitioners, right? The white belts help to keep the art alive by keep bringing in new people that will be future black belts. But the fact of the matter is, White belts quit at a higher rate than everybody else. To get the blue belt, that's probably the biggest hurdle that you're gonna get to. Once you get the blue belt, then I can't say it's all smooth sailing from there, but it's certainly easier because you've already gotten yourself used to the lifestyle uh, long enough to earn that blue belt, which is, like I said, a pretty hard belt to earn. So let's kind of back up. If it takes 30 people to step on a mat and try out jujitsu to eventually create one blue belt, then how many blue belts does it take to create a purple belt? It depends on every school, but with our numbers, I'd probably say it takes about 10. 10 blue belts to make a purple belt. Purple belt is the longest belt, typically. Now, some of you will blow through purple belt uh, because you sat at blue forever in a year. Some of you will sit at purple and never get to brown. Uh, but I think for the most part, people who train get their purple belt and they'll find that that is the longest belt that you have to go through. Now here's my reason for it. I guess what I would say is the typical experience for most people. And it shouldn't be, but it is. And it was my experience as well. In fact, the, for many of you, many of you who know, who know me, you know that I had a purple belt for 14 years. 10 of those years were spent still training, not regularly, maybe in a good year, I might train once a month for those those 10 years. And in a bad year, I might train three to six times in that in those years. Uh, but I still wanted to train. I stepped, I still kept, kept it in front of me, but I always found other things to do. And a lot of it was because of the fact that during my blue belt, I learned a lot of techniques. So white belt, you learn techniques. Blue belt, you learn techniques. Purple belt, you continue to learn techniques. It was at the purple belt level though, that I began to feel overwhelmed because I had a lot of stuff that I had learned and, but yet I hadn't gotten a command of it. Some stuff I did have a command of obviously, but, but a lot of stuff I learned, I go, I know I learned that, but I suck at that. In the meantime, I knew that there was other stuff that my instructor wanted to teach me. So it got to be a little overwhelming to the point where I think to myself, I'm never going to learn all of this. And I bet a lot of you at Purple Belt are thinking that right now. So, here's the typical way you work through your Purple Belt. White Belt, you learn your basics. Blue Belt, you start to learn some advanced techniques. Purple Belt, you start to learn more advanced techniques. And it's when you get into deep in the Purple Belt, meaning not first, second, maybe your third or fourth stripe of Purple Belt, that's when your instructor tends to look at you and goes, okay, Ryan is getting a little serious here. He's, uh, he's been at my school for a number of years. He's not gonna skip out on me. He's got a lot of holes in his game, so let me spend some extra time with him and let me try to close those holes up. You notice your instructor starts to kind of say, hey Ryan, um, your arm bar from the guard, not too good. Let's kind of work on it, get it fixed up. Uh, Ryan, your choke from the mount, not too good. Let's get it fixed up. You know, he gets to start spending more time with you or he may tell one of his other instructors, hey, you know, Ryan is, is he looks like he's gonna push toward brown belt, so let's kind of get him cleaned up. And when I say cleaned up, it's to plug a lot of the holes in your game because you have a lot of stuff out there, stuff that was thrown up on the wall, and some of it stuck and a lot of it fell off. So some of the important things we need to kind of pick up off the ground and put it back up at the wall and make sure it sticks. That's really what the purple belt is for. Because you've learned a whole lot, now it's a matter of getting the knowledge into you so that you can execute. Uh, not so much a familiarity with a technique, but a command of a technique. And that may take a while because that may involve having to break habits. You may have a bad habit of always shifting your hip out a certain way when you're going for an armbar from the guard, when you need to shift your hip out a different way. But you've been doing it for 
five, six, seven years now. You were never corrected on how to do it correctly. So now as a purple belt, deep into your purple belt, we're gonna fix that for you. And part of the reason why things take so long during purple belt is because you need to break bad habits and you need to replace them with good habits. Well, how long will it take for you to break a bad habit? You know, that's why it's easier for me to bring in somebody who's never had jujitsu and to get them up in speed, up, up to speed quickly versus somebody who's been training somewhere else that had a different style and had a different way of doing things than we do. That would mean that I would need to get the person who's at an advanced belt into the school and I have to say, okay, every way you've been doing things, you need to change it. So now I don't want you doing arm bars like this anymore. I don't want you doing chokes like this anymore. Your cross side is gonna be different, your mount's gonna be different. So it's almost like they're starting all over, but it's not because they already do have a foundation in jujitsu. A lot of it is just tweaking here and there, but it comes down to how receptive that individual is. A lot of times, by the time you're purple belt, you're not on your first instructor anymore. You may be in your second or third instructor. If that instructor has taken ownership of you, he's going to now, he wants to instill in you his game or the way he does it and the way he wants you to do it. If you're going to go to the next level with him, you're gonna have to buy in consciously and subconsciously to his system so that you can get to that level. You've had five, six, who knows how many years behind you where you were bought into somebody else's system, now you have to make some tweaks. Sometimes it's hard to do. I have students that have come from other schools and in fact, I had somebody learn our curriculum faster than anybody who trained three years, three and a half years at another school. But he got it quick and he just accelerated from there. On the other hand, I've had guys that were in the school for a couple of years and still haven't gotten 100% command of the white belt curriculum. It really depends on you. You need to want it. And purple belt is where you really need to focus because you need to get everything solid. But like I said, you may be on your second, third instructor and you may need to kind of work a little harder than somebody who didn't know anything coming into this. So that's one. For somebody at a, at a school like Kama Jiu Jitsu, um, we plug your holes along the way. So you're already doing things to the way we want you to do them. You know, somebody at our, at, at our school, for instance, may not know as many techniques as you would at another school. But we like to make, make sure that you have a deeper understanding of the techniques that you do know. It's a different philosophy. Dave Kama and I were talking just last week about that. And it's really the difference between learning wide or learning deep. At Kama Jiu Jitsu, we try to, we try to te teach people deep. So maybe a few techniques, but you know them very deeply versus um, spending that time to go wide on your techniques. I'm not saying one is better than the other, it's just a different way to do it. When you get through white belt, you learn your techniques. You go through blue belt, you go through those same techniques, add a few more. And when you go through those same techniques as a blue belt, you go a little bit deeper. You get to purple belt, you go through the same original techniques, this time a little deeper, and you learn some more advanced techniques. The way I learned uh, Jiu Jitsu, white through blue, yes, same techniques over and over and over again. Into purple, yes, same techniques over and over and over. But when I went ahead and switched schools, then it was more, I was learning more techniques rather than a deeper understanding of the techniques I knew. There were some techniques that I knew very well, but there were other techniques and more techniques that I learned, but very superficially. So for purple belt, uh, there was a lot of cleaning up I needed to do. I started to learn during my purple belt years a lot of the sport and the competition techniques. And during my brown belt years with Professor Dave, I basically threw them all away. Uh, because in retrospect, for me, it was really a waste of time for me to learn all that stuff because it, it's not the kind of jujitsu that I consciously and subconsciously wanted to do. I had no interest in that kind of jujitsu but yet I was learning it. So as a result, I didn't really learn it all that well. I, I wasn't really charged to learn that stuff, uh, which means that I, I didn't show up for class as often as I probably should have. So, but that's my story. Uh, yours, yours is probably different. But I'm assuming you're learning what you want to learn. So really focus on it. You know, you're a purple belt. You're now, uh, especially if you're, let's say, let's see, you're, you're over the hump. Um, you're already on the downward you know, the rest gets easier to brown and black. Keep up with it. A lot of people quit during purple belt because it's a long belt, but don't quit. Just keep on. You will get it. You will get to where you're trying to get to. If you feel you're not making progress with the belt, don't worry about it. Just keep learning what your instructor wants you to learn. Instead of asking, or instead of asking yourself, 
What do I need to do to get the belt? Ask your professor. Okay, you know what I'm doing. What do you want me to do next? And what do you want me to do next? And then what do you want me to do next? And just keep going and going and going until one day he surprises you and puts a brown belt on you. It'll happen. Just remember, it's all in your mind and you just need to really think constructively. I hope that helps you. I could do one for brown belt, but really, I don't know how many of you guys are even at that level yet. So first things first, right? Well, that's what I got for you. Hope that helps. Anyway, I hope you had a Merry Christmas and I hope you have a Happy New Year. If you'd like to help the channel out, we've got some links below in the description box uh, for some books that I think are really good um, that I have myself. If you click on them and you make a purchase, then you help out the channel. If not, that's fine. Keep enjoying what you're watching. Take care. Thanks for joining us. Happy training. Bye-bye.